Hey guys, this is Daniel with Pwn CNC, and I'm here to show you something pretty cool. If you have a uh, Shapoko machine, it doesn't matter whether it's three, four, five, no matter what, um, their controllers, both their older controllers and the new Warthog controller, do not have an, a relay to trigger the forward functionality of our spindle kits. Let me show you how to um, get around that through a little bit, of, through a couple of settings on our, on our VFD. I think you'll find it very interesting. Let's get into it. Okay, hopefully you can see all three things. We've got our VFD up here in the top left. We've got my machine running carbide motion here in the middle, and I've got the uh, spindle motor. It is plugged in, you, as you can see right here. Um, so whenever we tell it to run in RPMs, it will spin. I do have the IoT power strip unplugged so that my shop vac does not turn on. Now, let me show you how it works today. So if you're, work, if you're using one of our spindle kits today on a Shapoko machine, um, whenever you tell it, or I'm sorry, whenever your G-code file has the command S3-6000, for example, you it'll enter that in and you'll notice that the VFD is blinking. It's, it won't do anything. And that's because it is in stopped mode. And when you hit, you have to hit run before the spindle motor will do anything. So oftentimes, um, many people with Shapokos as of today, before, you know, if you're watching this video, you're learning how to, how to make some changes, which are really cool. But today, before you hit start on your program, you have to hit run. You have to hit run on your VFD so that this is not blinking. Um, that way, when the controller sends the command to run the RPM at a certain RPM, it will actually run those commands. For example, if we hit um, F3 S6000, for example, it now spins the motor up to the speed. Now again, I've mentioned this in a previous video, the lower RPMs are not quite as accurate. The higher RPMs you get, the more accurate the VFD, or actually the controller's interpretation is to know how much voltage to send out to tell the VFD to run. If you hit a M5, it will stop the motor but again, the motor is still in run mode because it's not blinking. If you hit stop, now it is safe to approach with your couple of wrenches in order to do bit changes. I worked closely with the Delexi manufacturer to identify a series of codes. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is hit mode, which will change it into VFD, into programming co uh, codes. These are all the codes that are defined. I've got a big sheet right here that I'm gonna follow but basically you're gonna do these same codes on yours. Now, when you first hit mode, more than likely you're gonna pop up at uh, P0.0.00. What you're gonna use, you're gonna use these up and down arrows here and this double arrow, as well as the enter key to, to navigate. Basically, we're gonna, the first code we need to change is we need to go to P0.0.03 and hit enter. Change that to a one by hitting the up arrow and hit enter. The second code we need, to, we need to change is we need to go hit this double arrow to go from the, this cursor to this cursor, the first digit. The first digit we need to change to a two, so P2.0.00 and hit enter. Change that to a zero, enter. All right, next code we're going to go to is we're gonna use the up and down arrows, change it to P2.002, so 2002, hit enter. We're gonna change this to a 21, and then hit enter. Next, we're gonna to go to, let's see, scoot this over to the, over, uh, hit the double arrow to go to the second digit, change that to a two, then we're gonna to go to the next digit, change that to a one, then change that to a nine, so P2.2.19, and hit enter. Now by default, this is um, three volts. And what this is basically saying is, this is at what point does the voltage coming over the 
over the line, at what point should we trigger the forward function? We want to lower this down to one volt. So hit the double arrow and then go over and change that basically to 01.00. When you get that through using the arrows keys, hit enter. Next, we're going to go to hit, hit the double arrow to go back to that first digit, change that to a three. The second digit to a 2, so P3.2.00, and hit enter. This one we need to change to an 11, so 00011. When you got that set up, hit enter. The next code is we're going to go up one, so P3.2.02, enter. We're going to change that to a 411. We're going to hit enter. Last code we need to change is we're going to go to P3.2.07. Hit enter. And this one's super easy. Just change it to 0001. And hit enter. Now hit mode. And we are done. Um, let me zoom out and let's, uh, let's see what this does. All right. We've made our changes. In the VFD, I still have the exact same setup. I have It's plugged into this to the spindle motor. Um, I've got the IoT power strip unplugged so the shop vac doesn't annoy our audio here. I've got the PWM line plugged in which is going down to my Warthog. And we're gonna go S3, S5000. And you'll notice it automatically switched from blinking mode to solid and it is now going RPMs. Change that to S3, all right, M3, S, let's say 2000, that will be less than a volt of, of power coming across, one, less than one volt of power coming across this, which means it automatically switched from running mode to stopped mode, and now it is blinking, and it is now safe to go approach your, your, the collets for a bit change. I hope you found that feature as cool as I did. I'm excited to be able to finally get rolling that out so that it is a fully automatic spindle system and there's literally no difference um, in how, you, uh, how, how we're wanting to run the spindle, which is you run, a command, you run your G-code file, it automatically starts spinning, it does its carve, stops, and allows you to do the changes, uh, the bit changes, and then hit resume and it just keeps going. There's no running or stopping on the VFD uh, keypad itself. So it's all fully, fully automatic, which is the way it should be. You still have the uh, manual override ability. So if you flip that to manual override, you can still hit the run and stop and turn the dial to run the RPMs if you wanted to run it without the controller. Otherwise, just leave it in that automatic mode and it is uh, fully automatic hands off. Um, so yeah. I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the uh, in comments or questions down below. Reach out to us at support at pwncnc.com and we're very happy to help my, me and my entire team. I'm hoping to get a, many more videos. You're going to love what I'm going to do to this machine next. <laughs> yeah, but don't just own your CNC, dominate it.